You're gonna have to bear with me on this one. I'm a little uh, under the weather. Mmm. Oh yeah, it tastes great. Okay, what's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things, and today we are taking a look at my Vertex Transit bag. I briefly showed this bag in one of my recent videos when I went over my EDC backpack. This is the Vertex EDC Ready Pack. And this bag is basically for everything that I need with me every single day. If I'm going out and filming or I decide that I do not want to work from home, I basically throw everything in this backpack everything that I need, and then there's a little bit of space for some extras. I have my camera equipment, extra batteries and lenses for my camera, a few other odds and ends, and for the most part when I'm leaving my house to film somewhere else, chances are I'm going up to my range, so I also have some medical supplies in here, and then other tools, and basically just anything that I might possibly need in my everyday life. This bag still comes with me pretty much everywhere I go, and this is definitely my most carried and used bag from Vertex. Honestly, it is the bag that I use most overall out of all of the different bags that I own. So I brought up my transit in that video and you guys wanted to see how I have this thing set up and why I have it set up the way I do. So let's get into it. Now the main reason and really the only reason that I would leave my house with this bag over my regular EDC backpack is if I know that I'm going somewhere where I want to carry off body. That means carrying all of my EDC items that I typically have in my pockets and then as well as a firearm. For me that honestly doesn't happen all that often. Like I said I basically work from home or I work up at my range. And then other than that going around doing everything else I typically would just have everything on me like I always do and then I have my EDC backpack. Now the way that I have this thing set up, it really comes in handy for me when I'm riding my motorcycle, but there are a lot of different situations where setting up a bag this way could really help you out. Maybe if you go to the gym or you're going to the beach or the pool or some place where you can't wear your typical jeans and belt. When you're going to a place where you want to have all of your regular items on you, maybe even a little bit extra, but you don't really have the place to put it. This bag is perfect for stuff like that. So in the past, the other bag that I had set up to do something like this was my Vertex Commuter Sling. I've done a full video on this. This is also a sling bag, just like the Transit. This is a sling, as you can see. And when I was living at the beach, this thing would go to the beach with me all the time. I would take it down to my pool. Basically, when you live in a place like that where you are always in board shorts or swimming trunks, chances are you're not wearing a belt. So having a bag like this where you can carry all of your stuff off body is very cool. So that is what I'm using the Transit for now. This is obviously a lot smaller than the commuter, but it fits my needs and it also holds a little bit more than I even really need. The bag looks pretty small, but it does pack out fairly nicely. So let me show you how I have this thing set up. In the front here, just like almost every other Vertex bag, you have this pull handle. You rip this thing down and you have access to the front Molly webbing and Velcro in the front. As you can see here, I don't carry anything up here other than a patch. There are also some straps here if you want to put anything on the back here, like maybe a helmet. That would definitely come in handy when riding my motorcycle. You also have the secret compartment underneath here. This is also the same type of design as a lot of other Vertex bags. You can slip something inside of here. As you can see, this compartment goes all the way to the top of this front pouch. And then when you have this thing Velcroed down and secure, the average person honestly couldn't tell that there was anything in there. So the reason that I keep this part open is to take all of my EDC items that I have in my pocket and throw them in here. So here I have a multi-tool that I've been carrying. I have my flashlight. I also have my keys. And then if I have something a little more important like my wallet and my cell phone, I can simply slip that under here. Now if for some reason anyone goes into this pouch of my bag, they're only going to find the stuff that I left out here. My cell phone and wallet are pretty much hidden in there and chances are they would not be able to find it very easily. So now I have absolutely nothing in my waistband or in my pockets. Everything that I want to have with me is now in this front pocket. The zippers for this compartment do also run all the way up here underneath this grab handle. So if you want to be extra secure and you don't want anyone pulling this thing down while it is on your back, you can run them all the way up. And then once they're at the top there, this grab handle kind of covers where the zippers are. This grab handle is awesome by the way. A lot of the Vertex bags have these. It makes moving this thing around, pulling it in and out of your car much easier rather than just using this back handle here. They also put the handles on the side here for something which we will get into in a little bit. You probably already know what that's for. Now before we move on to the next pouch, I might as well put this thing on and show you guys how the strap works. This is pretty much just like every other Vertex bag that uses a sling style like this. There is a buckle detach right here in the front if you need to get it off of your body very quickly. There is a rolled up length of webbing right here, that way you can extend this thing even further if you want to, but I have this set the way it is, nice and tight, for a particular reason. 
There also is a little attachment over here for a waist strap, which I took off because I never use those things. And if you are using this bag with a firearm in it, chances are you do not want to have that thing cinched around your waist. So the reason I wanted to put this on first was to show you guys that handle back here. If I wanna grab something out of the main compartment, I can simply grab that handle and swing it around to my front. You will notice that I have this bag pretty tight around me because I want it to sit right up here around my chest area. And again, we will get into that in a second. So when the bag is slung around in front of me, I have access to these zippers here. As you can see, like their other bags, this thing is held tight. This clamshell design keeps the pocket from falling all the way down that way. Anything that you have in here will remain in here. I really only keep two items in here, one of them being an IFAC. And then I also have a Safe Life Defense backpack panel in here, just like my EDC bag. This thing is buckled in place here, and as you can see, it is super thin. There are some people who might question having something like this in a bag, but just like a seat belt or a fire extinguisher, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. It sits nice and flush in here out of the way, especially with these straps on, and then you just kind of forget that it's even there. There are also some admin type of pockets in here if you wanna load this up with anything. You got smaller ones for maybe a pen over here and then you could fit smaller flashlights or maybe a knife in there. Basically whatever you want. There's also a zip pouch in here with a little clip. I personally don't use these pockets but you could definitely load it up with anything that you see fit. In this first aid kit, I have everything that I have in my other one as well. So there's a tourniquet and a bunch of other medical supplies. When you go to the range and shoot as much as I do, it is very important to have medical supplies with you. And of course, if I'm carrying a firearm here, it's also super important to have that stuff. So now if you guys wanna see a video on exactly everything that I have in here, I will do that in the future. So that is all that I keep in this middle pouch here. And now moving on to the third and final pouch. You guys saw how this worked in the intro and you probably have seen it many other times on my channel. This back pouch here is of course where I keep my firearm, so if I want to have access to that, instead of grabbing onto that outside handle, I will grab onto this little pull cord right here. When standing normally, that kind of falls right next to my right hand, so it's super easy to grab without a whole lot of movement. And then with that one swift movement, you have access to everything that is in here. Now, like I said, this is not something that I carry with me every single day. I'm really only running this bag if I know that I'm going somewhere where I don't want to have everything on me. So because of that, my choice of firearm actually changes. Since there is plenty of space back here in this bag, there's really no point in having the smallest gun possible. So I would much rather have something with more capacity and something that I shoot better. Because of that, I run my Glock 17 MOS FS in here. On here I have the Surefire X300 and an RMR RM09. This is a big gun and it's definitely a lot to conceal if you do have this inside of a holster inside of your waistband. I shoot this gun very well and I am definitely confident with it. So because I have all of this spare space in the bag, this gun works perfectly for me. I'm running this in a black QVO secondary holster with their Velcro backing. I also have the Vertex Loops in here, which you can put anything in. I happen to have a spare magazine. There are a ton of different setups that work if you wanted to use something like this, and this is just what works best for me. Now, when it comes to actually using a bag like this, because I have that Safe Life panel in there, when I bring the bag around to draw, I actually don't want to open it up all the way like this. I have this bag slung tight like this, that way when I bring this thing around in front of me, the bag sort of stays up over my vital areas. And then when I'm unzipping this to access my firearm, I don't want to pull this all the way down and then have that panel fall out of the way. Now that wear side is facing away from me and the only thing that is in here is my holster and then a little bit of padding from the back of the bag. Now there are also a few other things that you want to keep in mind when training with a bag like this and it is basically just safety. Some things to keep in mind and you can see in this video right here. You should be moving both of your hands in unison. So first my support hand is coming up to my chest and actually feeling where that strap is while my strong hand is going back and grabbing for that pull tab. As I pull the bag around in front of me, my hand stays indexed on that strap so I can feel it all the way up to my chest. And then at the same time, I am sliding open the bag. Your support hand should do that just like clearing a garment when appendix carrying. So if I have my hand indexed up here on this strap, that is the closest point to where it will meet the master grip of my gun. So when I draw my gun out, my hand is clear of the muzzle and then I am pushing the gun out towards the target. I can then take that support hand and meet it with the grip on my gun and then push out. When you're looking at this on video, a lot of times it looks like the people using these bags are flagging themselves. But for the most part, if you take that support hand into consideration and also index your finger off of the trigger when you are unholstering, that is definitely the safest way to go about things and it is just common sense really. 
So once you're done shooting, I typically bring the gun back in, index my hand back to this strap, and then go ahead and reholster, looking my way into the holster. A lot of people say, oh, well, don't take your eyes off the threat. Yeah, that's fine and all, but if you are carrying other stuff in this bag with you, you really wanna make sure that nothing got inside your holster there that could cause an ND. If you really think about it, you should definitely be looking into the holster while reholstering. People say, don't take your eyes off the threat, but it should no longer be a threat if you are putting your gun away. If I have to pull this thing and actually use it, which I really hope I never have to do, you best believe that I am not putting this away until whatever is causing that life-threatening situation is completely done. If there's still a threat, why do you wanna put this thing back in its holster? So those are just my two cents on that topic, but what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. One other thing to mention is that if you need to get this bag off of you quickly when you have it slung around in front of you, there's this little push tab right up here. You simply push your thumb into it and then it will break free from your body and you can go about doing whatever you need to do. Now, will I ever have to use this bag? Chances are probably not. For the most part, I have it on me as a convenience. Like I said, when I'm riding my motorcycle and I don't want to have all of my stuff in my pockets, chances are it could fly out on the highway. I carry appendix, so sitting on a motorcycle kind of leaned over for a long time, it really gets uncomfortable. So having a nice, small, compact option like this is very important. I definitely don't get as much use out of this bag as I do my regular EDC pack, but the sling design of the Transit makes it much more easier to draw from concealment than you would with the EDC Ready Pack, which has the two straps. What I really love about all of these Vertex bags is that there are so many different options for capacity and how much stuff you can actually put in them. You got some really big backpacks like the Gamut, you got the smaller backpacks like the EDC Ready Pack, and then you have the Commuter Sling, the Transit Sling. There are so many different options to set these bags up to work for yourself. Maybe you don't even carry a firearm or medical supplies or anything that I talked about in this video. There are still some nice features that probably could work for you, one being that whole clamshell design. Maybe if you're a photographer or videographer and you travel light like myself, I really only carry an extra lens and some batteries. This design will allow you to have quick access to everything that you need, whether you are swapping batteries on the fly or even swapping lenses. You pull this thing around to your front, pull out a lens, do a quick change. You throw that other lens back in here and you're ready to go, all while standing up and nothing falling out of it. I personally have just found a lot of good uses for these bags other than just firearm related stuff. And they fit my life really well, specifically these two bags. So maybe something like this will work for you. I will leave links down in the description below for both of these bags as well as the video that I've done on these other Vertex products. There's also a discount code down there, so if you guys want to try one of these bags out, you can use that and save 25% off of your order. So that is it, nice and simple, my off-body carry solution using the Vertex Transit Sling. If you guys have any questions on it, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And if you are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. That's going to be all for today, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.